Namaskaram, good morning. First, I'll begin with a clarification. I can understand Malayalam, nothing beyond that. Uh, yes, my, my wife grew up in Ernakulam actually, and, uh, but I have understood Malayalam not because of her, but mainly because I have sung so much in Kerala. There was a period of time when uh, I've probably sung at every ambalam possible in Kerala. I've spent weeks and weeks traveling across Kerala. So my little knowledge of understanding Malayalam comes from my travel. Uh, though my wife, of course, fluently reads, writes and speaks Malayalam. I'd like to first say that it's a great honor to be here and deliver the memorial lecture. I'd like to thank uh, the Malayalam department and of course apologize that I'm not speaking in Malayalam. Um, it's an honor to be at this university, honor to deliver the memorial lecture and spend this morning with all of you, um, especially in such a protected environment, uh, with the police making sure that we are all safe. So thanks to the police too for their presence. My world is the world of sound. That's the way I have understood life. That's the way I have learned to live with the environment around me, with the people around me, with the communities around me, with the colors, everything. Everything for me comes from the world of sound. I'm not even saying music, I'm saying sound. And therefore, Anything I speak or anything I say comes from that window, the window of sound. I am not a sociologist, I am not a historian, I am not an anthropologist, I am none of those things. But it is what I hear that has influenced everything that I have become and I am becoming. And therefore, thank you. And therefore, I, that's why I would like to talk about the world of sound and try and see how this world of sound has changed me and what are the questions the world of sound has given me. The topic is beauty and its ugliness. I say this because as an artist, that title of an artist is a big burden in life. Because one, two things happen. As you grew up, I learned, started learning music when I was six years old. Uh, my mother used to sing, not professionally. And uh, like they put a lot of young Brahmin boys and girls in party class. I also put in party class, as they say. And I started learning at six. From that moment, the moment that somebody presumes you have talent, and they enter you in that domain of art. There are multiple things that come to be understood. First is that you're doing something beautiful. It's presumed. It's presumed the moment I sing sa pa sa that something beautiful is happening. And that beauty is presumed by the teacher by the student, by the environment, and therefore you believe you're contributing to that whole world that is so beautiful, that in a way is pure. There is something so pure about it, that it is sacred almost. It is something to be protected. So the teacher always wants you to get that sa more right, get that pa more perfectly. Because in that getting that right, there is this elevation that happens to even that little child. Even that little child. Even me as a six-year-old boy. And therefore, this beauty is what drives the world of the art. Or this understanding of beauty. That you are creating something special. The artist is considered special. This is something we all will believe. And art is something special. The moment you give that categorization to art, and let me clarify, I'm coming from my experience, my personal experience, 
we will go to other experiences soon once you give that status to this world of art or at least the world that i belong to then any perception that is ugly or any idea that they could be ugliness is discarded thrown away or is presumed to be an error this is how i am trained i am trained from 6 years about this kind of beauty i am trained that the more and more i intensify that kind of beauty the more and more i am elevating society the more and more people come and understand the intensity of this beauty the more and more they are elevating themselves so in a way i am almost like a almost like one swami ji guru actually it is true in some very very odd way you become that because in you people see the impossible and i'll tell you something about music music has one quality that is very interesting art is a very general word we use it very loosely music does something even more interesting if you saw a painting there is a painting in front of you you can keep looking at it right a sculpture there is a sculpture there a dance there is movement you're seeing body you're seeing actual physical things there in music especially if it is singing it comes and it goes it's like a magic trick you hear a sound a beautiful melody and the melody fills you but you have nothing to hold on to nothing to hold like that melody it's gone but i remember the tune in my head it's not gone so what is it it's mystical it's unfathomable and you will keep singing there is you will keep singing that tune in your mind i'm sure all of you here at some point of time when you travel or when you walk you are hearing a line of song in your mind how can you hear in your mind just think of that act how can you hear in your mind i can hear my guru shambhuguri shrinivasayar sing chakkani raja now in my ear there is no sound being produced this is the magic of music and because of this quality of music it makes it even more dangerous because it is so and and a musician who can do that becomes a magician you can create that illusion and get everybody into that sound and that experience is real it is absolutely real and within that sound you experience something profound something unimaginable it will stay with you for the rest of your life you don't have to even see that musician again in your life but that music is there inside this makes music even more interesting as a being we use the word art very generally so i just want to go into that a bit there are many ways you have to perceive art one in terms of medium that is what is used to make art another in terms of why so let's backtrack a bit why why is there art in this universe in this world why why should there be art at all there is this famous thing that everybody says is art is already there art is in nature we all say that but is art really in nature is the coconut tree coming and telling you i am a piece of artwork is the coconut tree saying that i am a art object no you and i are looking at the coconut tree and saying it so art is not in nature it is you and me art is completely a human creation it is created by us we bestow upon things the idea of art when i say a bird sings the bird is not singing i am hearing the music in the bird the bird may be just calling a mate bird may be crying for help but to me it is beautiful 
and therefore i decide it is music so one of the most incredible things you have to realize and i say this many times and i want to say it again and again that art is a human creation you and i have created art you and i have decided what is art but some you know it's possible that human beings it began with mapping for example when people went hunting they wanted to know where the animals are going to come back and they started marking those things in caves and that's how it started probably but then it moved very fast into other things even if you look at cave drawings you will see something interesting it is not just literally about where you find the deer to hunt there is something more that happens even in a cave drawing what is that the hum- human species figured out quite early that in the expression of art there is something unique that happens what is that uniqueness that happens that uniqueness is the ability of art to remove you from what is literally happening there so you see in a cave painting a cave man or woman we don't know we keep saying cave man shall we say cave person the cave person drawing something it could be hunting a deer but then it is not just about the deer being hunted by one person it is about the idea of hunting will you all agree with me that it is about the idea of hunting so there is a separation between the hunt and the idea of hunting that is art when it allows you to make that separation it becomes art and this human species figured this out very early but they also figured other things they realized that the human being is moved in so many different ways that we create so many different kinds of art forms whether it is in music or in painting that each have a different role to remove us from the literal and experience something all this sounds so beautiful which is why art always seems to be something special and there is through this human beings then decided this idea of beauty now let's come to this idea of beauty itself what is beauty is beauty can we say beauty is what i find pretty what i find pleasant to my ears or can there be a beauty which is more that's the question i'm asking and when i ask that question i have to look at ugliness and that's where the ugliness will come in between if beauty is just about what you find pleasing and i find pleasing there is nothing to discuss about beauty it is just perspe- perception your cultural background your gender your caste your environment will define for you what you think is beautiful if you have a new experience you will the human mind will map the new experience as per already what you've experienced and say yes this is beautiful accept it you will accept it your mind will say this is not beautiful you will say it is ugly if that is all beauty is then what is there to talk about it we can only argue i find this music good you find that music that is a futile argument it's actually a waste of time maximum you can influence the other person a little bit but is there something more about beauty can there be anything more about beauty that is essentially the question i'm asking and i'm asking that question because my search in my life began with that fundamental question on whether the music i was singing is really beautiful see i had at one point of time in any field if you reach a point of shall we say excellence you have all the tools in your hand in music for example i have all the tools in my hand i have sung for long enough to have all the tools it's the voice it's the technique it's the history it is the depth it is the understanding i have everything in my hand if i was going to sing in front of you today i know exactly what to do from beginning to end i know what you think is beautiful already you don't have to tell me i know i know what i think is beautiful so finally we are both happy we are both happy either you will say that my singing has not come up to your level of what is beautiful today tm krishna was not in form sir 
he is saying is better than this. That's the maximum thing you are going to say, which is okay. But there is a certain acceptance that what I am doing is beautiful. This is what bothered me. At one point of time, I was bothered by the fact that what I was singing was presumed beautiful by me and everybody. And I knew how to deliver beauty. Imagine how ugly that can be. If I know to deliver beauty, there is something wrong with it. Beauty happens, beauty is not delivered. If I was delivering beauty, then there is something manipulative about that relationship. It means I am playing some kind of a trick on you and myself. That is what I believed. But I didn't know what it was. I had no idea. So my first search began with, okay, we keep talking about Carnatic music being old. Tyagaraja sang like this, Dikshitra sang like this, Sangeet Ratnakara is written like this, Bharatanatya Shastra. We all say this, I am a musician, musicians don't usually read. I can tell you, musicians do not read. Generally, musicians will not read. Even I did not read, by the way. I started reading later in my life. Musicians generally even want to go to a museum. And if you ask them for a reason, they'll say, no, sir, we have to be always immersed in the music. All nonsense, I'll tell you. No musician is 24 hours immersed in music. As a musician, I can tell you that. That's just a way of saying my world is better than any other world. Therefore, I'll stay in my world. That's all we are saying. So my first thing was, okay, let me find out where this music came from. We say it's 2000 years old. Let me find out first is, what is it? So I started doing this research. And uh, for many years, I was just researching old treatises, old texts. I'm no Sanskrit scholar, so I had enough scholars to help me. And I used to ask questions. What is this? Why is this raga like this? If it is like this for the last 100 years, what was it like 200 years ago? Do we know? Can we reconstruct it? And I kept digging, 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 digging. And the most shocking thing happened to me. So in one of the treatises that I worked with, we tried reconstructing the music. I'm still part, that project is still going on. And when I sang what was reconstructed, it sounded so horrible. And I got scared. I said, we say this music is so beautiful. If this is how it sounded 150 years ago, this is horrible. So what is this thing I find beautiful? Is it just because one set of people who see each other's face every day say it's beautiful, we all agree it's beautiful? Is it time bound? Is it culture specific? These are all tough questions. I'm not saying I have answers to any of these questions. I'm only putting this out for us to think. Is that just specific to this, say, 80 years of music or 100 years of music? Or is there something beautiful in that which I don't see? Within my own art form, I was struggling with this problem. So one thing that struggled is, okay, I find it beautiful, but what I sing, which could be approximately how people heard music 150 years ago, is ugly to my ears. Then how did Tyagaraja sing? I don't even think about it. That's a very dangerous place to go. If 150 years it sounded like this, if Tyagaraja sang 200 years ago, my God, will I be able to listen to Tyagaraja sing? We pray and we worship Tyagaraja today. But if Tyagaraja came and sang the way he sang then now, would we think he's a great musician? I don't know the answer. I've said many things and got into trouble. I'll be careful about this at least. <laughs> I don't know. The truth is I don't know. Let's be very honest. I don't know. I don't know whether I'll find the Veena playing of Dikshitar beautiful. I don't know. But when I sing, I experience Muthu Swami Dikshitar. I've not even seen that person. When I sing his Kirtana, the audience says, you brought Dikshitar alive. Which Dikshitar did I bring alive? Who is this Dikshitar that you all experience when I sing? Is it that Dikshitar? Is it a Dikshitar of our own creation? Is it a Dikshitar who reiterates who you are and I am? Is it a Dikshitar who confirms to your belief system and my belief system? Is it a Dikshitar who is representative of our cultural identity? Which Dikshitar is it? And I was torn by this struggle because I loved this music so much. And I said, if I ask these questions, if everything demolishes and falls, can I sing this music? 
as a musician as an artist that was the first you know the human species self preservation is very important we live by self preservation we want to first secure ourselves that is how we survive so the first thing for me was self preservation i want to preserve my world i want to preserve this carnatic world i get an audience people applaud i mean i don't want to break that why would i want to break that i love the appreciation so i struggled with this question the moment i asked these questions many other questions started entering my head i said even in my own world which is the carnatic world which is a very, the brahmanical world in within this world i am struggling with beauty then what about the world which i never notice the world beyond like they say in tamil this vattam the world beyond this vattam or even better the kanar the well this is a well i am very safe inside that well what about that world because if you had spoken to tm krishna in 1998 even i can't speak to the tm krishna now because that tm krishna would have said what would have looked at me and said what are you saying this is the most beautiful form of music how can you ask this question cinema music is music okay street music is we are getting a lot of music today street music is street music but it's street music so then my that question started emerging what about what i what about the sounds beyond these sounds how do i listen do i really listen and i want to tell you one thing as a teacher of music i'll tell you one thing i'll give you one little experiment i'll do in, i do in class and then i will tell you how i'll extrapolate that to our conversation so in in class i have different students they are all sitting in front of me so i'll sing a line i'll sing for you one line atyagaraja kirtana simple hmm chakani raja മാർഗമൂലുണ്ടക ചീര ഗജ മാർഗമൂലുണ്ടക സിങ് ദിസ് മൈ സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ദിൽ റിപ്പീറ്റ് ദെൻ ദെ വിൽ ബി ദിസ് വൺ സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ഐ സിങ് ദിസ് ലൈൻ ടെൻ ടൈംസ് ആൻഡ് ദിൽ ബി സിങ് ദ റോങ് തിങ് ഐ സെ നോ ഇറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് യു നോ sing that and we'll go on and on on 15 minutes i'm struggling then one day when this was happening i suddenly discovered something i discovered that the student is actually not listening to me so who is the student listening to you know what the student was doing the moment i'm singing the student is already singing in their head so the student is singing listening to her own voice or his own voice and when they repeat they are repeating what they are they have already singing in their head they have not listened to me they have listened to themselves so then i said okay shut your brain off stop listen to me i had to force literally force and say stop don't listen to my voice they got it like that now let's so the most im- beautiful thing about most important thing about music is not singing or playing it's listening the most important thing about painting is not your hand your eyes the most important thing about dancing is not you moving but your stillness and let's take that same idea to what conversation we are having now to listen do i really listen when i listen to those things that are beyond this vattam beyond this square i don't listen i am listening to myself i am listening to my own sound when i hear the music of tayyam it's not the music of tayyam i'm hearing i'm hearing something that i've already heard in my music and then putting it on its head i don't even know the voice of that artist i don't know the voice of that artist so fundamentally you discover through music that you actually don't listen 
which means in society you actually don't have relationships you have no relationship you just have your own construction you put that construction on everybody and continue with life in that construction and therefore music art started asking these questions of me first is my music beautiful at all then what about the beauties that existed beyond so then my friends will argue no 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 what do you mean of course we think that is beautiful of course we think this is beautiful but if you ask them little bit more they'll put one but over there whenever in a sentence please take this as a rule if anybody says i agree with you but that's not a statement at all the moment but comes in there there's a problem always so most of my music friends friends will tell me everything is beautiful but you know whatever said and done in our music there is something more which means that the person is not listened at all and i'll give you one example for it in fact two days from today i am going to goa for a performance we have a tradition in tamil nadu i know it's there in andhra also here also koot we call it ter koot or there is another word katte koot there is a debate about whether it should be ter koot or katte koot this is basically um ritual theater which is also done in streets but also done mainly in temples also usually by the dalit community uh this is similar to um, say kudi attam to some extent or yakshagana but it's different in the form it's it's little different and we are doing a collaboration between the carnatic and the kut it's an experiment the experiment is that the carnatic sound also becomes background score for the kut along with the kut music it is a social experiment and it's also a musical experiment to see what happens can we try this the first time i listened to kut i hated the sound of kut according to me they were screaming i didn't hear any melody in their tone they were not pitch perfect they were not singing exactly in pitch so there was something ugly about everything about it but you know i love to say indian culture is diverse no in this country we love to say that indian cultures are so diverse it's like europe is one country so i have to say kutu is beautiful i have no choice so of course diversity you know kutu is also there we love but actually heart of hearts inside me my caste privilege my cultural privilege tells me kutu is what it's okay boss It's okay for one side show. Main show has to be me. So the first time I didn't like it, which means I was not listening, which means I was not seeing. I was not doing both. I was not listening and seeing. Then we started working with Mr. Raju Gopal, who is one of the greatest kutha artists we have in this country today. And one day something happened. It was night, one a.m. i was in near kanchipuram that's where their school is they were performing abhimanyu vada and in fact it was performed by young children boys and girls so it was in fact one of their first performances so they are not within courts professionals okay and abhimanyu vada begins at 12 o'clock it finishes at 5 am okay five hours we are in the night sitting there watching at 4 o'clock around 3 34 is when the whole climax happens and kutu is they do one story in kutu for 9 nights to 12 nights each night 6 hours so one scene sometimes will take 2 and 1/2 hours one scene and at around 4 o'clock something magical happened for me i'm speaking only for myself suddenly i felt beauty i didn't feel beauty because i associated what he sang to some raga in you or it sounded similar to something i've heard nothing somehow i was able to enter that space of kut i was able to be with every character being portrayed i was being i was able to enter what i would now introduce another word is the aesthetic of kut me being a carnatic musician somehow disappeared for some period my caste disappeared only for that period came back very fast that also i'll be the first one to concede 
and something happened to me this happened many times but this is an example i want to say i was able to take out the baggage of my identity and enter a different universe of beauty that is a relationship this is a relationship a relationship happens this is true of any relationship in life friendship partners is when the two individuals at least for certain period of time can enter the universe of the other individual society is no different art is no different i was able to get i had a relationship with the community of kut artists momentarily that day for an, one hour i was able to experience a beauty that i was never be able to experience before i was able to be part of a completely different understanding of the world so that is beauty too this is beauty too so where do we exist of course after this gets over i come back and i become who i am there is no question why i gave you this example is i introduced another word through that example aesthetic and i'll come back to that i'll, I'll bring it back in the conversation but i just want to place this struggle that happened to me as a musician so for me beauty itself became troublesome so every time i felt maybe i was maybe now looking back at it maybe i was over scrutinizing everything highly probable every time i experienced beauty i was wondering what am i experiencing but i also knew there were certain times there was some truth but a lot of times there was no truth there was a lie and this is where the other conversations entered my life which is gender and caste but they entered through sound and the visual they didn't enter through sociological understanding i read books later of course but i didn't initially read anything i realized why go to art the fact that i find somebody beautiful itself is caste what i understand as beauty physically is driven by caste or a caste perception in another country it could be race another country it could be color it could be anything there are multiple zones how often will i look at a transgender and say she is beautiful or he is beautiful she is beautiful how often will i do it not naturally so the whole perception of gender the whole perception of beauty how i look at itself is driven by my social conditioning entirely so can there be a way to escape it or should we struggle with it so my struggle with carnatic music began with i have to struggle with this i can't go around my life saying i create this beautiful raga i sing this beautiful todi kalyani and run away not addressing that while todi is being created some ugliness is happening and the ugliness is the judgment that todi automatically puts on everything else we all put on everything else we all put on the future and on life so unless i make unless shall i say in english i sali todi a bit make it a little messy i am not going to discover todi so my political questions are aesthetic questions my social questions ask some questions of sound so people who ask me why don't we just stop singing carnatic music they have asked me this question and i have also wondered about it if you have such so you would seem to have problems with everything carnatic you have problem with caste you say it's brahmanical hegemony you say only brahmins listen to music or at least upper caste if i can expand it a bit uh, that this is not representative of society and this is a cultural hegemony this is aesthetic hegemony why sing this music stop it no i will sing this music because i think i will demand that we ask we sing this music and question this music because my biggest fear was maybe there's nothing in this music beyond socio politics suppose i discovered one day that the whole music is only socio politics imagine my my life my profession is dead 
No, but there is something more. There is a possibility that by asking difficult questions of this sense of beauty, the beauty actually opens up. That something happens to it. The questions then proceeded. They didn't stop. Even within the Carnatic world, I had to ask questions about communities that have been removed from the sound. So I say beauty, I say sound. Where are the Devadasis? What happened to their sound? Where is their sound? Their sound is now interpreted by me, upper caste TM Krishna. Isn't there a problem in that? Isn't there a problem that you remember Bala Saraswati or T. Brinda only because TM Krishna or somebody sings? Where are the Bala Saraswati's of 2018? Where are the Brindas of 2018? Where are the Devadasis of today? Where is their sound? Where is where are those women in music? Why in music? In dance. The dance that we call today Bharatanatyam. Where are these women? So when we say beauty, we are constructing a socio-political model of it. Everything that does not fit in that model, we have already discarded or we have absorbed within. So when I say Bharatanatyam, I go to, I love Bharatanatyam, I look at it so beautiful. How can I not see that every time a Padam or a Varnam is performed, you are also saying about those people who were never allowed to perform it in their lives ever again, who don't exist in my mind space. Isn't it violence? Isn't it violent not to think of them? In fact, the fundamental senses of violence, is violence that we have in society are these structural violences. The physical manifestation is only later. But structurally, we create a violent framework. Structurally, art has created violent frameworks. I'm not saying everybody is doing it purposely. This is how we behave as species. I'm saying let's be aware that we behave like that. That's all I'm saying. So this was a violent, it is a violent thought. I have to think about this and ask difficult questions of it. So even within the Carnatic world, there has been so many movements that have manipulated beauty. And I can tell you these influence not only structure, but content. I can tell you the content of Carnatic music also has been driven by socio-politics. I don't want to go to the technical details, but that's for another day. I can give you hundred examples how content is driven by control. Then we come to this other word, power, control and ownership. It is about owning something. It is about controlling something. It is about retaining something. Again, this is very normal behavior of the human species. We all love to control, hold and guard. And that's what we have done. So, the questions then multiplied for me. Okay. What was I trying to do then? Was I then saying Carnatic music is this heavenly art form which is trapped in the social politics and I am going to dismantle this politics and free it so that every person in the world knows its beauty? Hmm, how problematic is that? How problematic is that? I didn't realize it first. I will be the first to concede. I didn't realize it first. I probably started with that intention. Maybe in my mind somewhere, I may have not articulated, but somewhere behind my head, maybe I was trying to say that this is so special that everybody needs it. Everybody does not need Carnatic music. I'll be the first person to say that here. Everybody need not like Carnatic music, but that is not the conversation here. Conversation is two, three prong. Everybody has a right to hate Carnatic music. That is my conversation. Everybody has a fundamental right to say, I don't like that sound. Which means I respect that other person's view irrespective of their social position, cultural position, gender, that the person has the right and the equality with me, the producer of that art form, to look at me and say, TM Krishna, Carnatic music is horrible. That is an interesting position to think about. That is a fascinating position to think about. I'll tell you, world over the, the cultural world, especially the elite cultural world, 
never likes rejection never we build an environment where rejection is not possible see you can reject me but you can't reject carnatic music the two different rejections you may not like team krishna you may like unni krishna you may not like unni krishna you may like sudar gunadan but ultimately you like carnatic music that baseline i will maintain always right so we don't like rejection which is why the classical world and i think that's an offensive word the word classical honestly think it is an offensive word and the word folk is even more derogatory in the way they are framed i would like to throw both those words into the dustbin just call each art form by the name that they are that's enough and so therefore i will never put myself in a position where maybe there are 300 people here all you 300 people have probably never heard this sound so much and are probably going to hate it i will never put myself in that position it's like party meetings irrespective of the political party they will always make sure that at least 200 people from their party sitting on the other side because they have to clap and agree with what they are saying correct no classical worlds are like party meetings only we always have 200 people on the other side who love what we are doing we always do so the question was that can i be hated when i say i i mean this aesthetic this sound and can i expect and hate is probably a too strong word shall we say disagreed with or rejected and can that be acceptable in the discourse can that be acceptable in the discourse but the discourse is not just that it is also about space in what space what art form belongs in what space what art form doesn't belong so we did one little experiment in chennai i will tell you this my own exper- my own experience so we decided that one of the things that need to be challenged is space because where something is performed it defines who will come into that place there was a tamil cinema called kaka muttai i don't know how many of you saw it you saw it okay good i have written about it but i will give you that same example there is a scene in that movie where these two little boys are searching for city center i don't know how many of you remember that scene okay they walk and walk and walk and he'll go across and this it's a very cute scene but it's that scene should just reveals everything like in one in one dialogue it's all over so the little brother and the older brother go to near city center and in tamil he'll say yenga pa city center and he says ado paradha and then the little boy say as if they're going to let us in there that one scene describes the whole structure of our society little boy looking at the brother and saying they will as if they're going to let us inside there so therefore that's the world i create so space has to be subverted if i subvert space interesting things happen so one of the experiments we did is okay suppose we do a relay of music on a running bus running bus like public transport bus right so in chennai we said okay let's try this experiment and we said not only carnatic music can be any form of music but we were i was sure the carnatic music had to go on a running bus i mean i was very insistent because i it's good for carnatic music to be among running bus people who don't even know what this carnatic is it's good it's very good for the artist also so the experiment we've done it more than once but the first time was when i went on it i was not scheduled to sing but i just got on to it so the idea was if it starts in one place every 20 minute another bus stop another musician will get in and relay the music take the music and then start singing another musician comes take the music and start singing could be from rock to carnatic to rap to nama sankirtana anything it's all the same um, we in fact even put bharatanatyam on a bus once i don't know how they allowed us but we did it uh, so towards the end of that trip i got on to the bus to just see how it was going on i was curious so of course there were people who were who were wondering what is going on and people who were loving it and then my 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 little friends who younger musician said anna you have to sing a song so i said okay so i started singing this is on youtube you can see this on youtube but you can't see what happened outside the bus on youtube so i started singing a bhartiyar song and we were reaching the last stop and there was this absolutely drunk person standing outside he started dancing to the bhartiyar song it was the most beautiful moment that has happened to me in a very long time 
he didn't care he was having a he enjoyed himself dancing i was singing bharati or song that i sing in any stage you give me a big stage i'll sing the same way only i was no moving bus that's all it was interesting i was but before starting to sing i was so nervous now why was i nervous nobody is going to throw stone at me they may throw stone at me today but they won't throw stone that day nobody is going to throw stone at me there was, but there was a fear inside me what was that fear i was scared i had never been scared about singing even the biggest stages i don't have a problem but i was scared that day why was i scared rejection i was scared that i and the sound that i represent is going to be culturally rejected and i didn't want to go through that so should i sing differently i just thought, had so many thoughts in my mind just muddling my head but i sang and this guy danced beautifully and the bus journey came to an end he loved what i was singing but they have been young children who have heard me singing and sat through my music like this literally like this they have sat in front of me closing their ears that was also a very good experience for me so the point i am saying is that space also needs to be explored as you again this is all about what you find beautiful right ultimately then went to the then the other questions raised okay you keep talking about carnatic music what about every other art form and its own spaces how do we segregate those spaces what conversation can you have with those spaces is it possible to have that conversation with those spaces so whether it is parayatam which is seen in uh, uh, paray is also here it's a round drum that you play whether it is paray whether it is kut whether it is you know theyam all these art forms what about those spaces when are those spaces going to be allowed to be featured in what we call within courts classical spaces how does that interaction happen if i put a performance of kut on the music academy stage will the music academy audience come i can tell you the answer now no they will not come and they'll give you they'll give all the reasons that you normally hear for the same thing ah we have some friends i think the point is so the question also became about all those voices all those art forms that have equal right in the world of culture and art and but this brought me into a very confusing situation the truth of the matter is i am upper caste i am upper class i am male and my understanding of social disparity is only theoretical let me be very honest only theoretical i have never experienced it in my life the, the if uh, the best thing that an upper caste person can say for you to know they don't understand caste is we don't have any caste differentiation we never discuss caste at home that means they don't understand caste simple way to find out because there is no necessity for me to discuss caste in my house why should i discuss caste in my house so i have no i have actually no understanding i have only what i've read what people have told me it is experience from the other side of people who have really felt so mine is purely anecdotal and theoretical i just understand the unevenness i understand the vulgarity i understand the violence but that makes the conversation very complicated because there are some politicians who now even in tamil nadu i don't want to mention names who say they we, we should not discuss caste at all we must take politics beyond caste no that is the most fraudulent statement anybody can make it's a fraud statement outright fraud statement because only way you can deal with caste is if you de- if you speak about caste not when you say it does not exist but then how does this interaction happen how can is it i mean i can ask that question does tm krishna have the right does tm krishna have the right to actually engage in a caste cultural art discourse for me caste discourse is also a beauty discourse right it's an aesthetic discourse does he have a right to do it and the thing is yes 
T.M. Krishna does have a right, but T.M. Krishna is going to make many mistakes. That's okay. That's fine, absolutely fine. I will learn. I am willing to say I am wrong. I will learn. I will struggle. But unless this handshaking and this conversation happens, this discourse is going nowhere. This conversation is going nowhere. And I am going to come back to that word I introduced but I didn't explain. Aesthetic here. To me aesthetic, see that's another word we use very loosely. We think of, again, we think of aesthetics as something that is beautiful. Something that creates beauty is aesthetic. No. Aesthetic, aesthetics is a structural mechanism. You have to understand. Now this is a podium, right? The aesthetic of this podium is not only about how it looks. It starts with what is the intention of the podium? The intention of the podium is to create this a formal appearance to me, to the speaker, to provide a certain guarding of me, provide a space for me to read if I had something to read. And that is the intention of the podium. Therefore, the aesthetic of the podium starts with the intention of the podium. Then you also want to add saying, we are creating form, we are creating shape. So then we create form and shape that also executes that job well. It's true of a chair, it's true of anything. So what you perceive as beauty comes from all these things put together. Right? If the podium was something like this, however beautiful it was, you will say, what a stupid podium is what you will say. Because that's not the job. Every art form functions exactly the same way. Sorry? Every art form has exactly. So the aesthetic is, an, is completely determined by intentionality. What is the intention of the art form? And therefore, what do you build as form? And within that interaction of intention and form, we create beauty. Therefore, if you have an interaction with only one intention and one form, you have only one idea of beauty. If the intention of a form shifts, then the idea of beauty shifts. I can give an example for that. I'll give an example of, see Carnatic music itself. I believe Carnatic music is not here to create religious discourse. It is not here to, it is not propagating Hinduism. That is not my intention. I, I'll be happy to argue that historically and theoretically. But there are many people who believe that Carnatic music is there because I see Rama, Krishna, Govinda. I'm not going to, that's their feeling. But what happens to their experience moment, that is their feeling. Their experience changes. There is a historical reason why it happened, but that's different. The moment you believe that the intention of Carnatic music is to bring in front of me all the deities that I believe in, then your experience of Carnatic music shifts immediately. <laughs> 